Hi everybody! This is the fourth episode in Revit API plus Python series. I want to show you how easy it is to create your own extension in Revit thanks to action creation by Revit. I'll help you create your folder structure for extension and show you how to create custom buttons in Revit. Also you will learn how to organize your extension with stacks and pull-down menus and how to use library to reuse your code across multiple buttons. There will be a few error messages along the way that I think that you should know about and how to fix them obviously. And in the next video I will show you how to host your extension on GitHub so you can share it with others or just have a safe backup online. There are a lot of things to mention so let's not waste any more time and let's get started creating our own extension for Revit with Python. First of all, find a place for your extension. I'll continue with the project I created in PyCharm in the previous episode. But you can create your folder anywhere and it's very easy to change location of your extension so don't overthink it. Create a folder with the name of your extension, mine is gonna be if tutorials and add that extension in the end of the folder name. Now inside of this folder we need to create our tab. Here use a name that you want to see in Revit. I'll call mine eftutor.tab. This folder can contain only panels, so let's create some. My EF Tools extension, I have panels for views, sheet, room, selection panels. As you can see, they are more like separate containers with their own name to organize your tools better. But now we'll create dev panel and test panel. We can create as many as you can fit on the screen, but for now two is more than enough. Finally, we can create our first tool in our extension. Let's make a folder with its internal name. I'll call mine hello world. And don't forget to add that push button in the end. This is the most important part. This is the simplest clickable button we can create in PyRevit. There are also some very special button types that we can read about in PyRevit docs, such as content button, URL button, smart button and no button. For now we're gonna stick with push button. Now all we have to do is place an icon and a python script file, then we'll be ready to load our extension in Revit. Also it's not just limited to python scripts, we can also place dynamo, c-sharp, vb.net scripts here, you can check more in PyRevit docs, link will be in the description. So we need an icon. I find all my icons on the website called icon8.com, let's type hello and choose a random icon. I'll take that one, select size that you want and download it. Then once it's downloaded, place it in our folder and change its name to an icon. And finally, we need to create our python script here. We can create an empty text document and replace file format to .py. Or if you're making a folder structure in PyCharm, right click on directory, click on new file, select python and type here script. We'll go through script anatomy in one of the next videos. There are a few variables that we need to create so PyRevit can display the right name and information about the button. I'll just write here special variables for button name, author and doc string. Let's make it print a hello beam world statement whenever it's executed. So now the last step is to go to Revit and configure PyRevit to load our extension. It's very simple. Click on PyRevit pull down menu and go to settings. In here, we are interested in the last menu, custom extension directories. Click on add folder and go to a folder where you have placed your dot extension folder and click on select folder. It says right here that reload is required for changes to take effect, but don't worry if you click on just save settings. There is a reload button in PyRevit that we can use. As you can see, I have a new tab appeared in Revit, EF Tutor. There is our Hello Beam World tool. Before I continue showing you how to better organize your extension and other neat features on PyRevit, I want to thank all my current patrons who have decided to support me on a monthly basis. If you enjoy my content and find a lot of value in them, consider joining my Patreon. Link will be in the description. Now, let's continue working on our extension. Once you start creating more and more buttons, you'll need to organize them better. So they take less space. For example, in my EF Tools extension, I have a few stacks to place multiple buttons in a column and pull down menu to place there a lot of relevant buttons. Open one of your .panel folders and create some folders for stacks. I tend to use column 123 for automatic ordering, but you can name them whatever you want. Just don't forget to add that .stack in the end. So let's copy this button a few times and create these containers. I'll place two copies in the column 1 and I'll put one copy in the column 2. I will rename these tools, I can remember if we can use the same name. And I also will go through each one of these scripts and change the button name and print statement, so to make sure that it's indeed a new button. Now to see them we need to reload our PyRevit. We will need to reload it every time we create a new button or update our library folder, I will explain it later. But we don't need to reload it when we make changes to already existing buttons. Here are our two stacks. Since one of them have only one tool, it will display as a single button. And it will change once we add more tools to this stack. Another great way to store multiple buttons is pull down menu. Same as before, we need to create a new folder with that pull down ending and place there some buttons. Let's create a few more copies of our script there and then change their names as well. 
We can even create pull-down menus inside of our stack. I believe this will need a unique name so PyRavid can recognize them all, but I'm not sure about this one. Then we need to reload our PyRavid. Now you can see that something is not right. This extra pull-down menu is supposed to be inside of a stack and not be here as a separate button. This is normal. Whenever we make changes to a structure inside of a stack, we need to restart our Revit so PyRavid can show it correctly on startup. Let's close and open our Revit. And now you can see that our pull-down menu is located inside of our stack panel. I think this is the only reason why we would need to restart our Revit. Just be aware of that. So what if I don't like the ordering of my tools in a stack or in my panels, and I want them to be in a specific order? There's a simple way to organize your tools. Go to a folder where you want to change order of your tools. First way would be to change folder names so they are sorted by their names. You can add prefixes 01, 02 and so on, but that's not necessary. We can create a new text file and call it bundle.yaml. Then modify it with any text editor. I will use Node++ for this or PyCharm. In here we need to type layout, place a colon. Then in the next line we need to put some spacing and a dash with a space. And then we need to write our internal name of our folders without their endings. Also, if you have a bundle file and you forget to write one of your tools, it will become a hidden tool. Make sure to update this file every time you add a new tool where this bundle file is located. Let's reload our PyRevit and nothing happens. As I have mentioned earlier, you need to restart your Revit whenever you make changes inside of your stack, especially the ordering. Let's restart our Revit once again. Now this is in the order that we specified in the bundle file. I just noticed that I have forgotten to add an icon to a pull-down menu. We can correct it anytime. I'll copy the same icon from push button, then I need to open our pull-down menu folder and place it here. Let's do it for the second one as well. Now once we reload our PyRavit, this icon should appear on pull-down buttons. Now let's look into more advanced features in PyRavit. You can create library folder in the root directory and then all your buttons will automatically be able to import different classes, functions and variables that you can reuse across all of your buttons. The earlier you start, the better. Let's go to PyCharm and create our library folder. Go to the root folder of your extension and create here a lib folder. Now we need to create an empty init python file here, so it acts as a package. Then we can create a folder where we will be creating our reusable code snippets. You can name your folders here as you wish, but I'm gonna call mine snippets. Inside of this folder we need to create another empty init python file. So now we can create different modules to organize our snippets. I'll create underscore selection python file. Let's make a function that all of you will need. For example, getting selected elements in Revit. The first line is telling Python to use UTF-8 encoding. It's necessary when we need to use a special characters. I will import all classes from Revit database. It's much better to import only classes that you're gonna use, but for beginners it's much easier to import everything and not to worry about it. Then I will create two variables. First one is UI doc. This is a UI level interfaces for the document. The next one is the doc. This is like a Revit project, but it's called a document inside of Revit API. Then we can start writing our function that will be used in other buttons. As I have mentioned earlier, let's create one to get selected elements. It's always a good practice to create doc strings to document your functions. It's not necessary, but it's a really good habit to work on. Let's make an empty container where we'll add all our elements. Then iterate through selected elements. This will give us element IDs of selected elements. Now let's convert element ID into element. You will often find doc used here instead of this part. So I will keep it my way. And let's add all these converted elements to our container. And the last thing we need to do is for our function to return these elements. And this is complete function. For those of you who like to make one-liners, we can convert it with least comprehension. If you're a beginner, you better skip this part. So we want to get elements out of element IDs, and we will specify where to get these element IDs. We no longer need this whole part here, and there is no need to declare a variable just to return it. So I'll just return my comprehended list. Now we can use this snippet to get our selected elements across multiple buttons. Let's open the very first button that we have made in this tutorial. To use it, we just need to import our function. I'm gonna type from snippets underscore selection import and then name of our function, get selected elements. Once we made library folder, we can also add it to our path references in PyCharm. This way, it will give us autocomplete for our reusable variables, functions and classes. Same as we did for Revit API autocomplete. It will simplify coding a lot and add here an absolute path to your library. Now we should have an autocomplete for our library. So if I type it again, it will give me suggestions for module names and functions inside of the... Okay, and finally, let's print a container of our selected elements. I have forgotten to declare a UI doc variable in this script, so let's do it on the top and then put it to arguments. And now let's test it. Go to Revit, open our tab, 
and click on this button that we have just modified. And there is this error message. It tells us that there is no module named snippets underscore selection. But we have just created it, so what's the problem? This is because PyRevit needs to be reloaded every time you make any changes to your library folders. Whenever you create a new function or you have changed an existing, you need to reload it. So reload your PyRevit and try it again. Now it returns us an empty list since we have nothing selected here. Let's draw a few walls and try selecting them before running. This time it returned us a list of selected walls. This is exactly what we wanted. Hooks is another great feature in PyRevit. We have an ability to monitor Revit for certain events and then execute our code if this event triggers. For example, we can set a trigger on importing a cat file, so every time somebody with our extension would try to import a cat file, you can show them a dialog box explaining that they should avoid importing at all costs and use link instead. I'll be making a separate video about hooks because they can open a whole new world of possibilities in Revit, and it's a big topic on its own. For now, it's good to know that there is such functionality with PyRevit, but I would only recommend it for advanced users. Also, there is bin folder. This folder is used for binaries. I have never used it, but I think people who need it will find a way to use it. Thank you for watching this far. I think you really want to get into programming with PyRevit. So keep learning and you will create your very own tools very soon. The next video will show you how to publish your extension on GitHub. And then finally, I will focus on coding more buttons with Python. My name is Eric Fritz and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.